Welcome back into the world of cross-dressing stories. Now, please consider subscribing and check out my Patreon for more exclusive goodies. Growing up in a house that was more a monument to my mother's glamorous past than a home always felt like living in the shadow of a legacy I both revered and longed to embrace. My mother, once a beauty queen, had filled our home with echoes of her former life. Trophies and tiaras, sashes draped over mirrors, and photographs of her radiant, crowned moments lined the walls, a constant reminder of the grace and elegance she possessed. It was these elements of her past that drew me in, whispering secrets of a life painted with broad strokes of femininity and poise. As a sensitive and introspective boy, I found myself captivated not just by the physical remnants of her achievements, but by what they represented, the epitome of femininity, something I felt a deep, inexplicable connection to. Each day, returning from school to the empty echoes of our large, ornate home, I felt the pull of my mother's closet, a room where her past fashions hung like relics of a sacred temple. Here, amidst the soft silks and flowing gowns, I felt closer to her essence, to the part of her I yearned to know and understand better. My father, a stern man with firms on what my interests should be, often tried to steer me towards sports and other masculine pursuits. He wanted a son who followed traditionally male hobbies, football, not ballet, woodworking, not fashion design. But the more he pushed, the more I found myself drawn to the gentle solitude of my mother's wardrobe. It was there, behind the locked door of her closet, that I began to explore what it meant to not just admire her world, but to live it. I remember the first time I slipped into one of her dresses. It was a delicate, floral number, one that I had seen in countless photographs adorning our living room. The fabric felt cool against my skin, and as I zipped it up, I felt transformed. Not into someone else, but into a fuller version of myself. I looked at myself in the full-length mirror tucked into the corner of her closet and spun slowly, watching the skirt flare and settle with a grace I didn't know I possessed. In that moment, twirling quietly with the soft afternoon light spilling through the window, I was no longer just Lenny, the boy expected to live up to his father's rigid expectations. I was someone more complete, more in tune with the whispered desires of my heart. Each rotation in front of the mirror brought me closer to the reflection I longed to see, one that matched the feeling inside, a harmony of my outer appearance with my inner reality. The house might have been silent, but in the sanctuary of my mother's closet, I heard a symphony of my own becoming, a melody of silk and secrets that I would carry with me, that long after the dresses were hung back in their places and the closet door clicked shut. Each afternoon as the final school bell rings, I feel a rush of anticipation that carries me swiftly home, my steps quickening as familiar roofs and trees blur into the backdrop of my urgency. The house, grand and silent upon my arrival, greets me with its secretive embrace. I... I know I won't be disturbed. Both of my parents are still ensconced in their respective busy schedules, leaving the house as my hidden stage until evening. As soon as the door clicks shut behind me, I shed the outer layers of my school identity like an uncomfortable skin. I ascend the staircase, my heart pounding in sync with each step, leading me to the room that holds all the magic and mystery of my mother's past, the closet. It stands at the end of the hallway, an ornate door carved with delicate patterns, guarding the treasures within. The key, which I've taken to carrying with me, turns in the lock with a satisfying click, a sound that marks the beginning of transformation. Inside, the closet is a cavern of colors and textures, each item hanging with the promise of escape. The air smells faintly of lavender and aged fabric, a scent that fills my lungs and emboldens my spirit. I run my fingers over the garments, each brush a whisper of silk and satin, calling out to be worn, to be seen, at least by the mirror and by me. Today, I choose a gown of soft chiffon, its surface blooming with the pale roses my mother once said reminded her of spring mornings. The fabric clings and then flows down my body, a waterfall of floral whispers, transforming me from a high school boy into the embodiment of the grace and elegance I so admire. Standing in front of the large mirror, I see myself not as the world expects, but as I feel, graceful, beautiful, complete. I turn slowly, the dress twirling around me, each movement a piece of the dance I perform only here, in the quiet sanctity of this room. 
The mirror does not judge. It only shows me the truth of this moment, the reality of my hidden self. My eyes are bright, my posture changes, and I see not Lenny, but Lynetta, the name I whisper to myself, the one that feels like it fits all the missing pieces together. This ritual, though solitary, is my communion with a part of my soul I can only express here amid the silent witnesses of hanging gowns and the soft glow of the afternoon light filtering through the curtains. Each session in front of the mirror is a step deeper into my own identity, a dance of discovery in the most private theater of my mother's closet. Here, in the flowing chiffon and the scent of lavender, I am not hiding, I am exploring, reaching towards a truth that feels more real than anything I've known. This is my silent rebellion, my quiet affirmation of self, performed daily in the soft whispers of silk. Every Tuesday and Thursday, while my classmates donned jerseys and cleats, gripped rackets and bats, I slipped away to the school's old, underused dance studio. This space, with its polished wooden floors and walls lined with mirrors, became my sanctuary, a place as transformative as my mother's closet, but alive with motion and music rather than silent reflection. Ballet was an accidental discovery, a compulsory school activity that struck a chord deep within me the moment I first watched the fluid grace and emotional expression of the dance. It was love at first plié, a passion ignited by the elegance and disciplined beauty of ballet, which echoed the poise and charm I admired so deeply in my mother. Here, in the dance studio, I learned to tell stories with my body, each movement a word, each routine a sentence of a larger narrative. As my body swayed and leapt, spun and posed, I felt my spirit unburden itself from the heaviness of daily disguises. In ballet, I found a voice for Lynetta, a way for her to exist in the world, even if secretly. The dance was both a shield and an expression, a means to hide in plain sight, yet reveal the nuances of my inner life through the artistry of movement. However, this newfound passion was not without its conflicts. My father, ever the athlete, delighted in the thought of his son following in his footsteps, often spoke of sports as the making of manhood. He envisioned me on the field or the court, part of a team, battling it out in games of physical prowess. Each time he talked of signing me up for football or basketball, my heart sank, and I retreated further into my secret ballet sessions. The fear of his disapproval, or worse, his disappointment, kept me silent. While I longed to share my love for dance, to show my parents the joy and liberation it brought me, the fear of rejection kept my words at bay. Ballet became my quiet rebellion, an act of defiance against the expectations of masculinity imposed by my father and by society. It was a double life led with aching caution, each pirouette a silent plea for understanding, each performance a concealed celebration of my true self. Thus, my talent in ballet grew, nurtured by the secrecy that both protected and pained me. My instructor, Miss Ilara, a former professional dancer herself, saw potential in me, encouraging my dedication and subtly challenging me to embrace the art form fully. You have a gift, she would say, her eyes knowing yet kind, but it must be shared to truly blossom. Her words haunted me, a gentle push against the barriers I had erected around my identity. But the divide between my secret life in dance and the expectations of my everyday existence remained, a chasm filled with both my greatest fears and my most cherished dreams. One golden afternoon, the house was particularly quiet, the kind of silence that amplifies the small sounds, the ticking of the clock, the distant hum of traffic, the occasional chirp of a bird outside. This serene quietude was my canvas, and today it beckoned me towards something grand, something daring. I had always admired my mother's wedding gown, preserved impeccably and hanging like a shrine in her closet, its allure was irresistible, and in a moment of bold curiosity mixed with reverence, I decided to try it on. The gown was a masterpiece of silk and lace, whispering histories and secrets as I slipped it over my head. The fabric enveloped me, tracing my form with its coolicate touch. Standing before the mirror, I was transformed. The dress cascaded down my body, pooling at my feet in a soft halo of white. With each movement, I was a part of its story a story of love and celebration, rebirth and beginnings. In that reflection, I saw not just myself, but a vision of beauty and grace that transcended gender, transcended fear. I twirled, lost in a dance with my reflection, a dance of joy and abandon. 
So engrossed was I in my reflection that I didn't hear the front door open, nor the soft footsteps that approached. It was only when I caught sight of another figure in the mirror, a reflection within a reflection, that reality crashed back. My mother stood behind me, her image overlaid with mine in the glass. My heart stopped, caught in the grip of sheer panic. The fear of judgment, of disappointment, was overwhelming. I stilled, the gown's rustle silent as my breath caught in my throat, but the rejection I braced for didn't come. Instead, my mother's expression was soft, her eyes not filled with anger, but something else, something deeper, understanding, maybe even empathy. Her voice, when she finally spoke, was gentle, a soothing balm to my racing heart. Lenny, she began, her tone devoid of any harshness. It's okay, honey. Those words, simple yet profound, felt like the release of a breath I'd been holding all my life. Her presence, far from the cataclysm I'd imagined, brought with it a quiet acceptance that filled the space between us with an unspeakable relief. She stepped closer, her movements careful, respectful, and I could feel the tension melting away, a wall I'd built so diligently beginning to crumble. Let's talk, she said, her hand reaching out to touch the fabric of the sleeve lightly, a gesture that acknowledged my choice, my feelings, without a word of judgment. That afternoon, what began as a fearful encounter turned into a profound conversation about identity, desires, and understanding. My mother listened as I opened up about my feelings, my secret ballet classes, and the joy I found in expressing myself through what I wore. She didn't have all the answers, nor did she pretend to, but her acceptance was clear, her support unwavering. It was a beginning, a doorway to honesty and vulnerability that we'd never crossed before. In the soft light of the late afternoon, with the weight of the gown around me, I felt lighter than I had in years. For the first time, I was fully seen, and the acceptance found in my mother's eyes reflected a new, hopeful path forward. The revelation in the mirror marked a profound shift in my life, a turning point from which there was no going back. As I stood there, enveloped in the fabric of my mother's wedding gown, my mother's acceptance breathed new life into me. It was in this moment of vulnerability that I found the courage to fully embrace who I had long known myself to be. Inspired by the strength I saw reflected in her eyes, I whispered the name that felt like mine, but had never dared to claim aloud, Lynetta. It rolled off my tongue, a declaration of my identity that seemed to fill the room with its resonance. My mother's smile was warm and embracing as she repeated the name back to me. Lynetta, she said, testing it, letting it settle in the space between us. The sound of it spoken with such genuine affection and acceptance sparked a joy in me that I had never fully allowed myself to feel. It was a recognition and affirmation that I was seen, I was loved, and I was supported, wholly and unconditionally. Sitting together on the edge of my bed, we began to chart the course of a journey neither of us knew how to navigate, but were both committed to undertaking together. My mother, ever the planner, took out a notepad and began jotting down ideas, questions, and resources. We discussed everything from finding the right medical professionals for hormone treatments to considering how we would talk about this transition with my father and siblings, understanding that each step would involve both of us as we moved forward. We'll need to find a good endocrinologist, she noted, her tone practical yet gentle, and a therapist. Someone you can talk to about all of this. Someone professional who can guide us on this path. Her pragmatism in the face of such unknowns was comforting, providing a structure to the swirling emotions I felt. We also talked about the social aspects of my transition. We'll start with the family, she suggested, her hand resting reassuringly on mine. Once we feel confident, we can help you express Lynetta to the world, bit by bit. The idea of coming out to the world was daunting, but having my mother as my ally made it seem possible, even hopeful. As we planned, it wasn't just about logistics, it was about dreams and aspirations too. I shared how I wanted to integrate my love for ballet into my new life as Lynetta, to not just be in the background, but perhaps one day to dance freely as who I truly am under the spotlight. And why not? My mother exclaimed, her enthusiasm bolstering my own. Lynetta, the ballet dancer she mused, a twinkle in her eye that mirrored my own dreams. That afternoon, as the light began to fade from the sky, leaving streaks of pink and orange across the horizon, a sense of peace settled over us. 
We had plans to make, people to talk to, challenges to face, but we had each other, and with that, we had everything we needed. The path ahead would not be easy, but as Lynetta with my mother by my side, I felt ready to step into a future crafted by my own truths, no longer a reflection of someone else's expectations. This was my new dawn, and it was beautiful. In the soft light of early morning, the house still cloaked in silence, I stood before the tall mirror once again. This time, the reflection staring back at me was not just a dream or a secretive escape, but a reality I was learning to live each day. The wedding gown, once a symbol of my mother's past and my hidden desires, now adorned my form, not as a costume, but as a celebration of my true identity. Lynetta, not hidden, but wholly present. The fabric of the gown felt different this time. It was not just a garment, but a proclamation. As I adjusted the delicate lace and arranged the flowing veil, each movement was a testament to the journey I had embarked upon, from hiding in shadows to standing in the light, from fear to freedom, from Lenny to Lynetta. The gown, pristine and elegant, clung to me like a second skin, a perfect fit for the person I had grown to be. My mother entered the room, her presence always a source of comfort and strength. Today, her eyes were particularly bright, filled with tears that spoke of joy and a profound sense of pride. Seeing her reflection next to mine in the mirror, our images overlapping like layers of our shared history and intertwined futures, was a poignant reminder of how far we had come together. She stepped closer, her hands reaching out to adjust a fold of my gown, her touch gentle and affirming. You look beautiful, Lynetta, she whispered, her voice thick with emotion. Her words were simple, yet they resonated with the weight of our shared journey, echoing around the room and settling deep within my heart. Encouraged by her affirmation, I began to twirl slowly, the skirt of the gown billowing around me, a soft cloud of lace and silk. Each turn was a step into my new life, each graceful movement a dance of liberation. My mother watched, her hands clasped together at her chest, her smile wide and unwavering. In her eyes, I saw not just acceptance but admiration, and a fierce kind of love that said she saw me, truly saw me, and cherished what she saw. As I spun, the room seemed to spin with me, the past and the future blurring into a moment of pure joy. The challenges that lay ahead remained in my mind, but they felt lighter now, buoyed by the love and support that filled the room. We were not just celebrating a gown or a name, we were celebrating a life reclaimed, an identity affirmed, and a bond that had deepened in ways neither of us could have imagined. The scene closed with us, embracing, the wedding gown a soft barrier between us, but our hearts closer than ever. My mother's pride and my own sense of self swelled within us, a harmony of emotions that sang of new beginnings and beautiful possibilities. Lynetta's Mirror, a story woven from threads of courage, identity, and maternal love, concludes on this note of hope and celebration. It is a testament to the power of being seen for who we truly are and the incredible transformations that can occur when we are supported and loved unconditionally. This narrative, while deeply personal, resonates universally, echoing the truth that our deepest fulfillment arises not from conforming to the world's expectations, but from embracing our truest selves, supported by the love of those who matter most.